grin. <laughs> no, no, Sam. I don't think that's uh, where this one was going. <laughs> Cro- crossing streams, touching tips. Those are that's a completely different Ghostbusters. Really? <laughs> yes. No, 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 yeah. We got a duck, man. We got a duck. Got well, you. <laughs> Listen, you, you got to stop watching those uh, pirated films on Pornhub, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a very different Avengers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, yes. Thor's hammer. <laughs> as, as it stands, though, I got a question for you, Sam. Uh, you, you too. Uh, what would you both say would be the wildest one shot that you've ever been a part of, player or DM-wise? I haven't really been a part of that many, to be honest. I mm. mean, probably the Bloodborne one that I ran. Yeah, you know, that, that was a pretty interesting one. Uh, for me, I'd say probably the Ruby one that I ran a while back, because Ruby is just a very over-the-top, like, a, it's a very simple D10 system that's very over-the-top, and as a show, it's very over-the-top. Mm-hmm. So you okay. can really just kind of be like, hey, anime fuckery, have at it. <laughs> that one was fun. I don't really yeah. remember a lot from it, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I mean, either one. That, the, the first time I ran it, I had a coked up dude show up at my door, be like, hey, man, <laughs> just want to be friends. And don't kick me <laughs> out. So true. <laughs> NBC number five, man. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a wild night. Uh, how this about you? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Most wild of one shot. Um, oh, actually, I do have one. This is, this is, I'm so sorry, uh, my best friend James. Uh, so, first time he uh, invited him over to play some DD, and uh, yeah. we made his character the night before and what have you. Uh, and game is just about to start. We all go out for a quick pregame smoke. Uh, and I don't know what happened, man, but he passed out and just completely fell off of the stairs and smashed his face. And his name is Smash Mouth now. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, James. I love you, buddy. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's uh yeah that was the first and last time we played D, unfortunately <laughs> uh that's rough yeah that's right oh, up there with times. the time uh i was in this one game and one of the players in the game uh he was a little high and he had he had just recently got himself a gun so he was like uh, kind of liking that so yeah he puts a bullet hole through the ceiling of the place that he was in <laughs> No way. Mid campaign. <laughs> like, yeah. And so it's just like here this was all being done online. So uh, only one other player was in the room with him. <laughs> and we're just That's like the- <laughs> we, we just hear a bang. It's like what was that? Did did someone like slam a car door or something? It's like, no, no, just put a hole in the roof. How the fuck you put a hole in the roof? Oh, oh, oh man. I, I, I shot it. It, it, I thought it wasn't loaded. You are ex military. Oh, you are ex military, and you decided to uh, fuck around, and you found out. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> it that was is hilarious. crazy. It was hilarious. That's that funny. That's like, scary it, shit. It, you know, that's the real scared straight program right there. <laughs> Learn, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he learned oh. to not do that in our games. It's a good thing I, I made a rule for uh, my games uh, moving forward that there, there's a limit to how much weed and alcohol can be uh, used before a game. Yeah. What about during? Uh, you know, I all, I'm all for as long as reasonable you're, limits. You know, yeah, like if you can control yourself, I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. As long as you know you're not disrupting the game, you're not disrupting the players. Uh, yeah. I'm good, man. I don't really care if you can handle your shit. And that's cool. Yeah, I'm perf. I'm the same way with that. I'm perfectly fine with people doing it, but the moment uh, in game you're incapable of opening a door, yes. then we have problems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. If yeah, one hundred percent. If if you're uh, yeah, you can't even sit straight in your own chair or whatever you're doing. Yeah, that. Yeah, I like I had that my- is a fantastic mark to start the show with our statement being, you know. Do drugs in moderation. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> New data program. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. You'll have money for drugs. <laughs> You'll have money for me. <laughs> yes.
<laughs> and welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the show that brings you monsters, news, homebrews, and a little something special for your games. You know, do so in moderation. I am your host, Orion. <laughs> And I am your host, Sam. Welcome, welcome to a new episode. Uh, it's been quite a week. And you know what? We have a amazing guest with us uh, today. I want you to introduce yourself. Hey, name's uh, John, Johnny DM. How's everyone doing? I'm excited for tonight. This is going to be uh, quite the evening, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's because you know a little <laughs> bit about the news for tonight. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, I, I can't even bury the lead on that one. We have to jump into that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we got. This is TNF, bringing you nerd news. Yeah, this week in nerd news, well, we found some very interesting. Uh, like, I thought it was a joke when I read this. <laughs> i'm sure you, you didn't believe me when i said you're like wait orion what i had to send you the article and, and it wasn't even the only one there were a few others so yeah in a, a unique and educational initiative the uh there's a dungeons and dragons streaming show called science and sorcery and they're teaming up with the United Kingdom's uh, Vagina Museum for a special fundraising one shot called Clinical Hit. Now, first off, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop <laughs> y'all right there. Terrible joke. Terrible joke. <laughs> Clinical hit? Y'all can do better than that. I don't know. The dad joke in me is kind Political, of, uh, kind of all like over it. it. <laughs> yeah. The dad joke in me says, yeah, really uh, well. nah, nah, nah. A critical clit. Critical clit. Yeah, yeah. I see? Uh, you know what? <sighs> Maybe our viewers can vote on which is better. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> you know, important vote. This is the vote of the lifetime right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vote it up. <laughs> critical hit or critical clit? I do not know. But either way, uh, the event is set inside the reproductive system of D&D's biggest monster, the Tarask. Aims to raise awareness about gynecological anatomy and health. The story follows a band called Clitical Hit as they embark on a mission to il infiltrate the Dragon's Lair, which is located inside the well-preserved Tarask. I, have so I, I mean, you know. Well-preserved? Is this thing dead? Is this a necrophilia campaign? What? Oh, wait a minute, wait. Tarasks don't even breed like that. Like, I don't think they There's breed There's only one all. to each realm. Like, yeah, I, this has one. questions. So why would it have... What? <laughs> so they they hold on there's a there's a dragon lair inside the tarask i i, I guess so in the the dragon's lair is the genital huh. what i mean yeah. it, where, where do they Quite keep the, the horde, horde in the ovary? <laughs> oh, okay. maybe it's like a fossilized <laughs> tarask or something okay or like maybe, maybe it's like a, a sleep right it's okay. dormant so it just kind of yeah. Pops into I, its asshole and makes a, makes a home. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you know, there, there are some rules for that. <laughs> interesting. interesting. I, I oh, have to, I, I would hope that it's fossilized. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with a whole lot of greasy surfaces. And, you know, grease is a, is a terrible spell to deal with. <laughs> It, and as is that scooby-doo magic goes hard but like <laughs> to have an entire adventure covered in scooby-doo magic uh, that actually given the context that sounds way more risque than i intended it to sound <laughs> I'm <so confused. laughs> uh, featuring, oh, man. further this featuring a uh, guest host from various uh, science uh, disciplines including a neuroscientist uh, a pharmacologist, a and okay, so they got some doctorate type people, some people in the scientific fields. 
The live stream game encourages players to incorporate relevant scientific knowledge uh, and unorthodox uh, and the unorthodox <laughs> choice of the Trask's reproductive system as well, Lair serves both as a creative element and an opportunity to impart educational insights. The event will be broadcast live on Science and Sorcery's Twitch channel February 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, GMT, allowing viewers to contribute to the Vagina Museum through donations for in-game advantages or story choices. Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they're, they're, so, like, are they gonna? They just walk around and just be like, point, be like, this is the 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 Tarasks ovaries or whatever. Like, is, is this, this a? First you off, know their ovaries would be seven thousand pounds, and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> these things don't. These things are literally asexual. And I, I get it, get it. Homebrew, homebrew, perfectly yeah, fine for you, you Tarask in your world to be hundred percent a, a genital uh, thing. I mean, oh, uh, I once told a beholder that was a lesbian but the the story arc for that one is that beholders canonically don't have a gender they are asexual yeah. beings that are uh, created through magical means That's so right. I, I thought the fun idea there was like a beholder has a dream and in that dream he dreams that he well it is a woman and uh, has sexual needs but then that creates a beholder that it that has those needs, but yeah. guess what? Beholders are asexual and paranoid. So you have a sexually frustrated uh, creature with no possible outlet. So it's like, okay. It's, it's, it's something. So you have like a teenage uh, beholder is pretty much going on here. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Go through puberty. <laughs> That's terrifying, actually. Oh, yeah, man. just it, it, a beholder that is very upset because it cannot have a lover. It can it cannot be uh, with any of its own kind. It has desires that other beholders will never reciprocate. That makes for a very upset, very angry beholder. Extremely, I'm yeah. I'm very curious because like <laughs> a Tarask isn't even like relatively close to any normal animal you know, physi physiology. So like, why would it have any type of vagina that we would be able to understand in the first place? Like, I'm just thinking you... like a Tarask is big gargantuan. <laughs> a very, this is a massive creature, but altogether, even as big as it is, I don't think it's vagina would be any bigger than, you know, maybe a, maybe a block. It'd be like walking through one of those, uh, those like caves. And maybe about the size of had. walking into a small museum. Yeah. Oh man, I I just don't understand. I don't. I get the connection, kind of, but I I don't at the same time. It's like I I don't understand how D and D and vaginas and tarasks yeah. are like mixed together in this. It I really like don't. A weird connection. I, I feel like. This sounds like something like I'd be scrolling through YouTube, then all of a sudden, like Crit Crab reads a story about a DM that uh, has the party <laughs> show up in, in a monster vagina. This, and this, is, like, this is DD horror story shit right here. Yes, 100%. 100%. But it's broadcast everywhere. It's like, this is exactly what a DD horror story like. It has the ingredients. Yeah. I just, I don't get it. I mean, I hope it works out. It's, it's educational, but like... I just, I don't understand. <laughs> Like, I want to know who pitched this. Who's who are the players? What are what are their characters like? I need more information. Honestly. Yeah, I, I I don't I got I don't need questions. I need answers. Is this, is this like, a combat one shot? Come on, give me give me more. Uh... I'm, <laughs> What's I the mean, role playing aspect here? Like, how we <laughs> you know? Yeah, I've got posi positions. Can I get can I get involved? Uh, you know what? I I have to say <laughs> that. They can't spend the entire time being all upset about where they are no. in the adventure. So, like, uh, although it would be kind of cool if it was like one of those, um, what was that that movie from like the sixties or whatever, where they get all they shrink all down and they go into through the body. Like that'd be kind of a cool adventure going yeah, through the veins like of a like a terrace. Cool yeah, magic school bus. Thank you. Like that would be super cool, right? But no, mm -hmm. we gotta we got. I don't I don't, I don't get it. Like, why wouldn't we do that? Do you guys I mean, remember everyone remembers the Magic Grim. School Bus episode where they just went into a, a giant vagina, right? <laughs> <laughs> he shrunk down. 
it would be like Pacific Rim when they went into the kaiju body, right? And they were like, huh, I can't see in here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Who turned out the lights? I guess she's pregnant. Like, <laughs> I just think that like that SpongeBob episode, like it, depending on how the improv goes, they'll find like a sack and be, listen quick. Uh, we found an embryo. Turn on the lights. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, I, I, I yeah. <laughs> but, so good. Who? Who comes, comes up who with this stuff? The answers, <laughs> Damn. You, you, you know what? I, I, I don't, I'm not really a drugs guy, but I want to know. I want to know what they're taking for this. I can't believe we spent 10 minutes laughing about this. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? I mean, you know. I, <sighs> It's just such a weird thing that I wouldn't expect D and D to be connected to. I just don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't, uh, I don't understand. And because it's a D and D one shot, and it's for a charity. What's mm-hmm. Wizards of the Coast gonna do? They gonna say no? You can't do this. This is bad for our brand. Yeah. They already What's spent an entire burn, year burning right? their brand to the ground. You know, that's true. That's very that's true. true. They don't burn. need other people to do it for them. <laughs> I mean, outsourcing. That's a that, that's the story of China right there. They can outsource the burn down. <laughs> and at least if someone else does it, it's funny. And I, I, yeah, that's another just other disaster that I just don't understand. I would love to see that go to court, though. <laughs> like, you can't run this kind of uh, thing and then have to explain to the judge that you're that these people are ruining your brand by playing pretend and pretending to be these people hiding out in a monster vagina. Yeah, at what point does it become like a slander? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, I'm interested to see what happens. Like, it's a very odd choice for a for charity, but why is there even an entire museum for that? Like, I, I could see like maybe like a a full genital museum where like you have like a you know you kind of split it down the middle, like maybe like a like. A, sexual reproduction for like a, a, a maybe like a full historium but just do you really need a whole museum for just yeah. is, is there one, enough one there set? for like a whole a whole terrasse you could be like a whole terrasse like skeleton that would be kind of crazy yeah like i i that's the thing right like there's a whole monster there i feel that we could just explore instead of one area i don't uh yeah like i, I could imagine like going throughout the body like a dude. Yeah, that'd be cool, what, man. I gotta fight yeah. like a weird, like I don't know, whale liver something dude, that monster. Like that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be like oh, a, the King I can imagine level. a scenario where like a huge fight took place. You know, the Tarasco woke, it was defeated, but now they have the corpse to deal with. Right? It's this massive body, it's creatures, there's monsters that want it. There's countries that probably want pieces of it. You know what I mean? Like. Maybe yeah, and like, that's cool. They don't exactly truly <laughs> die, so having to contend with massive bacteria and antibodies. Think about the creatures that are going to want that body. Yeah, part. yeah. Or well, the creatures that come out of it as it like yeah, that come out of it. Like know? yeah, you know, like starts rotting and decaying. That that would be a huge like plot point that you could talk about. Mm. It being like a cause of of you know whatever some undead so cool. whatever like I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, Dude, I could see some like, crap. Be all sweet. kinds of like aberrations and stuff. Yeah, and the celestials being like, we want that corpse. Like, yeah, see, that's just it, right? Like gods would probably start getting involved because you know it's a trash. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, pretty, it's like you doing, know, legendary, yeah. right? Uh, I think they're missing out on some serious, uh, some serious potential with other organs, like you know the pancreas, the the liver. Like, yeah. Oh shit! You're falling into the stomach. Like oh, oh stomach shit. just like giant you know first thought is like gelatinous cube in the stomach you know what I mean like just Ooh. acid cube monster that'd be sweet yeah, think about what the Tarasque eats too yeah anything and everything so you could literally have to cross you have to traverse what's left of the stomach and go from point A to point B and then you have to fight things along the way everything is just 
a caustic uh, mess and you're trying yeah. to get from one safe spot to the next you can imagine there's like a whole like ruin in there and there's like oh. a village of people that are like we're trapped in a what like, oh that's <laughs> sick you meet some village oh yes that would be crazy <laughs> man and that'd be so good and they'd have oh. to be all recovering from the carnage and then meanwhile like then you show up and like shit this bro it sucks here. to be swallowed but we're on our way out <laughs> yeah that would be interesting like a whole on like rescue mission yeah. they don't even know that they're inside of a terrace they just you know they've been there for generations yeah, I mean, or imagine, eons or whatever they don't know, know any better i, I like that party. Right, the the king is like, or you know, some powerful figure is like, all right, we got to get in there quick. We got to get our pieces and get out. We need a small team. What do do? Party, boom, send them in. <laughs> the expendable. Expendables Tarask get edition. Done. Yeah, get oh. if you do can and get out. Like, man, like that's awesome. Knows. I could see that, and that would be really fun. That'd be a fun one shot, man. Just like special forces type of, just like go yeah. in inside the, the Tarask and find them. That'd be dope. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Mm. See, yeah, there's so many options, man. Like, I, I yeah, I, I just we're, we're like about even about an ear canal, like that'd be like some weird wax monster. Like, that'd be so gross. <laughs> just oh, get stuck yeah. on the side of the ear. Like, that'd be it'd be awesome. Hairs and stuff come out and start wrapping around you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like they're all ropers or something. Yeah. Oh, oh man, roper earwax is so terrifying. Yeah, it kind of makes me think of that one South Park episode where they like made a big emphasis about microbiomes. Like mm. a microbiome in this case would be a macrobiome in the sense that it's scaled up to our size, humanoid size. So that's very different. Something else to contend with entirely. The colonies of creatures <laughs> and like what would essentially be like the white blood cells of a tarask oh, <laughs> oh man. it beats the fuck out of pi- fighting a yeast infection inside the tarask a vagisaladin oh, oh. <laughs> 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 the paladin's oh, a gynecologist man. oh jeez that's so bad <laughs> die you vile beast <laughs> <laughs> you shall not desecrate this womb <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably move on <laughs> we do have a, one other piece of news <laughs> before we uh, fall off the cliff here um because <laughs> oh damn if i if i allowed myself i could joke on this all night oh i could riff on it all night it's 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 interesting it, it's something else but yeah rebel moon uh, tabletop uh, from uh, evil genius games uh the studio uh has been canceled uh, by Zach's blah, 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 kind of, let me just read this right and align it's my okay. words in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just a little retarded. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's okay. I, I can use that word. That's our word. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a well-known fact. I, I, I have a, I have problems. It's okay. Continue. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the the tabletop studio uh, behind a canceled RPG for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon has reached an amic- amicable uh, settlement with Netflix after a legal dispute. The disagreement arose when Netflix accused the studio of breaching a confidentiality agreement at the uh, GAMA uh, trade show in 2023. The tabletop maker, uh, known for adapting action films like Pacific Rim and Kong uh, Skull Island, has impressed Netflix and uh, Snyder with its plans for an expansive RPG set in the Rebel Moon universe. However, the lawsuit led to an abrupt halt uh, of the uh, tabletop RPG project. The parties have now settled with uh, Evil Genius Games. Uh, They will... uh, They will issue uh, pre-order refunds to retailers in the uh, coming days. Although a Rebel Moon game will not be released, 
Both parties express gratitude for the collaboration, hinting at future cinematic adventures and sci-fi projects. Interesting. The uh, resolution concludes a perplexing chain of events that began with the high hopes for a tabletop RPG uh, complementing Snyder's film. (coughs) (coughs) Dry throat, damn. But yeah, they got canceled. That sucks. That's yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, I don't personally care much for like Rebel Moon stuff, but you know, it always sucks to see people get shut down or you know whatever. I got my drink. I just don't. I I don't know much about the franchise to be honest, but uh, yeah, 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 that 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 does suck, man. I think it's like Um, supposed to be like Star Wars, but like Zack Snyder's like, hey, I'm making my own. Zack Snyder was the one that did like that Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah, he did a bunch of the uh, DC right? movies. Right, yeah. Like Justice like League. four-hour, like, Justice League or whatever oh, it was. Oh, right. The Snyder yeah. Cut or whatever. Yeah. They, so they have, like, like end-all, <laughs> be-all. <laughs> they have, like, four right. different versions of Justice League. <laughs> yeah. And one of them is just, like, it's it's Justice League, but black and white. And then we have <laughs> Justice <laughs> Zack white. Snyder's Justice League director cut. And then Zack Snyder's the Justice League walk. director's cut, but black and white. <laughs> <laughs> like like each dude, one is longer you think, than you, you think you're showing this off at some kind of art show you're gonna right yeah he's going to cans with it like guys come down. <laughs> it, it's like dude you're Sun not going to a something. film festival this is a bunch of nerds just just give us the goods and call it a day oh man yeah like i'm sorry but no if you're going four hours with something man like unless it's lord of the rings it that needs to be two movies. I, I, mm. you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> I think it's just one of those things where we are so ingrained and just stuck in putting all our plot into just like two hour movies. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like movies anymore. I really don't. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I don't like movies and it's just like, if I want DC, Give me a show that works. Yeah. Don't give me live action. Just give me an animated Man. show and go all in game. on it. You can. There's so much you can do in an animated show you cannot do with live action people. 100%. You don't even have to worry about the casting. You can cast. You guys remember, make- I don't know if you guys remember. Remember Spawn on HBO? Like that was yeah. so, that was so oh dope, God. man. I was like, metal this as is fuck. Like, that's what we need. That was amazing. Mm. Right, like, let's get some some McFarlane. Yeah, some good at like these powers and animators. Shows. Yeah, their animated mm. shows are always really good. Yeah, like even the '90s X Men, even with all the weird stuff they had to work around, it was still amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, there's tons of comics, tons of storylines out there. Just t- take the studio, have the animators go yeah. all in. Hell. Uh, hire out some of those uh, foreign animation studios that do like really good anime because they yep. do amazing scenes. Ooh, like, they do like the Chinese and the the Korean anime animations. Oh uh, yeah, they go wild on that stuff. They would go crazy. And the thing is, like, if you have if you let the writing team just like, hey, here's the original stuff, touch it up, write it a little bit better. We know there's some shaky writing in here, so just touch it up and no holds barred show people how dark how gritty how fun dc can really be yeah because- well and that's what made the animated batman so good in my opinion was that like it, yeah it, it, it was you know it, it it wasn't as dark as i'd like it but it was getting there and i'm like this is this is showing that there's potential here we need to explore this a lot more yeah like the i think some of the best dc movies i've seen were the uh, let's see the the, the ones with Constantine, the animated ones with Constantine in them, those went really I hard. I never saw those. Oh, dude, you definitely I should. Saw one of them. They, they, there's like okay. three or four of them, and one of them is a like I think he was in Flashpoint. A then there was a this whole apocalypse thing, and yeah, yeah, the then they, then they get had like two standalone movies for Constantine. And like, it's all dark as fuck. All this gritty DC stuff happening Mm -hmm. and characters getting ripped apart. Hell yeah. Like, yeah, you're getting all these crossovers, all these characters from all over the place. And one of the fun things about DC is be like, oh shit, 
that character showed up. I know that guy. And it'll be like some obscure <laughs> dude. Right. It'd be like, right. It's like, holy shit, they brought in Dead Man. I haven't seen him in ages. Dude, that's how I felt with like Moon Knight. I was like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, dude, all I knew about Moon Knight up until seeing that was like, he showed up in one or two episodes of Spider Man. Yeah. And Spider Man's like, yo, right. hey, uh, Moon Knight, is it like, what's your deal? And yeah, he's like, blessed by Conchu. <laughs> and at that point, it was, they really downplayed the fact that he had multiple personalities going on. Yeah. That's so and true. I was like, damn, that, that's kind of a shame. A little bit like Deadpool in the way that he's came to kind of break the fourth wall, too. Mm. Yeah, it was like, a, what, three or four uh, people in that head? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, Mark, the 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 Conchu avatar, whatever, <laughs> and then Conchu, I think. No, nah, there's like a third dude. Is there? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't finished the show, but I know it was really good. <laughs> I don't know if it's close anywhere. <laughs> I think DC is at its best when they're doing an animated series because that's something that Marvel just they can't do because they never stick with it long enough. Like, I enjoy all the animated Spider-Man shows, but they never stick around past a certain point. Yeah. And I, I hate it because, like, I want to see Peter Parker get out of high school and then be adult Spider-Man. Like, thank you. Right? Yeah. I'm tired of seeing his origin story a thousand times over. I get it. Exactly. Get it. <laughs> Let's see him as an adult. Exactly. I, I 100%. It's just like... I, I want to know what's going on with Parker Industries. Like, how did that happen? You know, yeah. that's in the comics, but I ain't never seen no uh, show get that far into Spider-Man. I want to know, like, what's going on? Like, we know he's got multiple love interests, but the oh. only love interest you ever see in an animated show is the one that they've committed to. Unless it's like the 90s one, in which case, like, they kind of, like, messed around with Felicia Hardy a little bit. That, like, maybe oh, talked yeah. about Gwen. But like uh, right. they didn't really like they committed to Mary Jane, but like Dude, in any other show, they only ever commit to the one. That's kind of like been my thing, too. I, I love when shows like like Flashpoint, for example, I think it's a great example of when things are like they show the the real dark and the real truth of like what that life is like. And like Invincible, for example, is a really good show. that I think, yeah, it's it well. And it's just weird to me because everyone credits Invincible weird. with being this uh, paragon of, oh, what if DC was gritty? But it already like, was that. You're just not showing it. Yeah, they're just not showing yeah. it the way that they could have. You know, I like when things aren't like kitted down. Like they should be as adult and as like true as they can be. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're like, missing like, their audience that way. Thing like power rangers or something or like digimon or like pokemon like that <laughs> the power rangers comics apparently get real dark and shit and i'm just like i'm about comics. that you see, know? that's kind of cool i would i would i'd like to see that you know yeah I, I don't like the power rangers but like if they're, it's getting all dark and shit i'm down <laughs> yeah yeah because like there, there's a lot to explore there i mean at at its base power rangers like they would have relationships and they'd have like, oh, there's that double life aspect going on. But how would that, like, realistically impact a person, you know? Yeah. Well, like, mm. just think of, like, and this is, I know it's been explored a thousand times, but, you know, you're, you're sitting there d defeating whatever monster of the week in this town, right? And you're, you're destroying all these buildings and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, eventually you'll be like, man, I've killed, like... 50,000 people, <laughs> you know, eventually yeah. it's going to take a toll on you, man. Like, right. you know, <laughs> cause I'm fighting yeah. some monster of the week. And imagine like it's been covered a thousand times, but having to blow off your friends, families and, and lovers just to mm -hmm. be able to save all these people yep. and not say a word about it mm -hmm. because you know, damn well, Lord Zed's going to jump down and be like, yo, you fucking this bitch. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Not even, yeah, no, hundred yeah. percent, right? And how many as DMs? How many times do we do that? We take someone, a player's backstory, and we take someone from their family, and we we kidnap them, we kill them, we do something to them to get them oh, pissed, yeah. right? Oh, it's absolutely. classic. Yeah, That's mean, what I love to do. do as a DM because it's just like hundred percent. Any, 
anything in your backstory can and will be used against you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And I love it's probably probably my favorite part of D is like sitting down with the character and be like, let's figure out your backstory. Let's let's sit down and and mm. and like let's really figure out what makes them tick, you know? Um and what do you care about? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What do you care about? What don't you like? Do you have a nemesis? Why are they your nemesis? You know what I mean? Like, do you have family? Are they still alive? You know, um, you know, things like that. Like even asking questions like, what's your perfect day look like? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, or or um, you know, ask them what their birthday is, you know, and, yes. and it makes them think, you know, it's like what's what's your birthday? I don't know, I never thought about it. You know, you know for some things. players that works really well because like some people are really into astrology. So it's like, oh yeah. shit, I need to be playing my character more like a Pisces. You know, that's See? an old- <laughs> the that's secret cool, alignment though. chart. Yeah. No, that's interesting though, right? Because that's that would be like an alignment chart. That's really cool. I never made that connection. That's cool. Mm. I would say that alignment, if you were to use a zodiac alignment chart in D D, mm. that could put more uh that put a lot more on what your uh, your class, what you could do for blessings and stuff. Like each uh, birthday, would, that's an extra level of customization oh, for your player. Yeah, like, true. Different zodiac signs have different aspects that go with them. So yeah. maybe assign like each a zodiac sign mm-hmm. a specific so like skill, and then each that's zodiac nice. by its base is already going to have an element associated with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that would explain why you know some mages are made more attuned to a certain element, you know, or they perform better, you know, or you know, yeah, more like that. To, That's to cool. Learn and be able to control or you know, something like that. Yeah, I mean, like how many damage know, types are there? there. <laughs> you know, I think there's like nine or twelve, something like that. Um, I mean, so it's it's close to to that number. Yeah. So imagine like okay. Uh, you're born under this star. That means that this damage type, anytime you take that damage, you're taking one less. Oh, anytime you deal that kind of damage, one more. more. That, that's a very minor I buff. See that. But that's big. Ooh. But that's cool. That's really cool. I wonder if that's not a thing already. Uh, it, it's yeah, going to be. That's I like that. It, that's really cool. Uh, and you could take it further, right? Like you really play with that as, as, as someone's arc, you know, where they start with, you know, their water element and you can, you start with shape water. Right. But then mm. as you later on, you go, you start like water bending and shit. Right. And you start learning these extra spells or extra damage. Like you were saying, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that, that as you kind of level up and I'm, I'm always a big fan of things that kind of level up with the character, start mm-hmm. off small and then kind of build it up and make it part of their, their story I, I or whatever always, that is i love that too because i love when yeah. things like slowly start to shine through as an aspect of the character and like maybe yeah. one day they're like you gain you know a feat and it's like boon the capricorn or something and you're like Ooh, yeah, i like see? that and it would have to be something on Oof. brand for yeah. whatever maybe that sign know, is right or something like i mean Maybe just like, oh, you are born under the sign of the Gemini. Mm -hmm. And like, once you hit level five, you get like a rudimentary form of uh, invoke duplicity. Oh, Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Mirror image. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ram, like Aries Ram, you get like the ring of Ram ability for once a day or something. Yeah. Your movement speed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like that. that. And the thing scorpion, is, scorpion, it could be like a Scorpio, it could be like a, some kind of poison or something, or yeah, sting or something, like even like a really. tattoo that comes off. I don't know. Oh, um, sweet. It, it's a great way to make magic more commonplace in a more magic setting because yeah. that at that point it's ingrained into everyone, even the non magic yeah. users. So many, so many stories have stuff like that where they're like, uh, what month were you born in? And like, you know, you have like, this like class system, you know, kind of like, Ooh, yeah, like Hunger you know, Games shit. I don't remember what it's really called, but like, uh, it would be like people who were born in like February have an attunement for like water, you know, stuff mm. like that. And then it would be like, you take it even f- further, maybe, because like, depending on what part you're in in the hemisphere, right, would determine whether it's a winter sign or a summer sign, right? So you could really oh, fuck with that too. <laughs> Turn right? into like, steam or like mist or something oh <laughs> it's the two to go. oh shit oh so cool oh being born on a cusp you could get like one like 
You yeah, could choose between yeah. the two aspects that you could possibly Ooh. get. If you're That's like a cool. sign and you're like on the cusp of like a fire sign, maybe you have a tomb into like magma or something. Right? Well, that'd be or really cool. Yeah. Or like there's always that um, the mysterious 13th sign. So maybe like, oh, this person's born under a cursed Ooh. star. Oh. oh, I like that. The cursed star. Yes. It may be like your abilities are like abnormal they're like wait a minute you don't you're not getting the normal stuff yeah, yeah. so like it could be like something as like a leap year kind of thing right where like it's just bad Ooh, news you're like you year, know it would be that'd probably be like an omen type of yeah thing. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah like a, oh, either cool. a good omen or a bad omen a however bad. you want to go about it because there, there's leap years and then there's the 13th sign mm-hmm. i never heard Those of this are, 13th sign oh yeah yeah. yeah yeah we talked about it a while ago uh, yeah see, if about. you did a proper uh calendar in D and D when the, they refer to it as a 10 day. So each, yeah, uh, oh, five, or yeah that, that's what, that's what they referred to that as. I, I don't remember correctly if it's okay. a precisely a 12 month year in D and D, but I've seen an argument for each month having 28 days because okay. if you had 28 days, uh, I guess the theory is that it comes out to a full 13 months to match the 13 signs. So check this out. Gotcha. So you wouldn't even have a blue moon that's because really that's amazing. the blue moon is the 13th moon of the year. Yeah. So O5 Susis or whatever is a large constellation on the celestial equator between Scorpius and Sagittarius. Um, its symbolism is the serpent bearer, which is like that staff with the, the serpent. Oh, form. like the medical symbol. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Caduceus. Yeah, the Caduceus. So it's kind of like that, I guess. And it's representative of like a serpent. So like... Oh, that that sounds maybe, sinister. Maybe they awaken and they're like like Harry Potter, you know, maybe they're speaking the snakes. And they're like, yeah. that's weird. Like, they're like, why are you, why are you doing that? Like... <laughs> Ah, shit. That's good. Maybe they're born with like some scales or something or some, something reptilian, you know, like they lose a tail and it grows back or something because they're under the, the you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, you really have fun with that. Or there's get, lots like, of languages in the, or, yeah, There's lots of languages and damage types. So I could easily see you throw an people. extra language onto each sign. Ooh. Hey, that's maybe, cool. Maybe just like a, at the start of a campaign just have everyone roll for their birthday mm. Mm. I kind of yeah, random i like we should, that we should, uh, work on making this uh making this a home booth thing. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> this slap cool. that on the patreon <laughs> yeah. uh, I, i'd put it on there but i'd also make it free just because i like this idea it's so we cool should, man develop this a little bit more <laughs> yeah i need a little some fleshing out for sure but it's it, I, like it, I think the idea is there that's like really cool it'd be a lot of fun <laughs> That's one of the fun things about doing the show. Coming up with ideas on the spot is like, oh, I love it. Yeah. I bet someone's done something similar. I'm sure. Like, I'm sure that everything's pretty much been done, right? Or some variation of it, but. That's what people say. But sometimes you can just do it better. Well, that's just it, right? And there's nothing wrong with doing something better, in my opinion. I'm like, look, took this Mm. idea, we ran with it and made it better. And at least we think it's better. Um, Good enough. Right. Dude, I bet there's somebody out there who's like, oh, man, I wish this like existed. Yeah, well, I mean, astrology, like, I'm not big into it, but a lot of people are, right? So I oh, could yeah, totally see people players definitely. jump into that shit for sure. Yeah, and having it be 13 based off of the uh, 28-day month, like, that yeah. gives you an entire system. Well, it's funny because I've, I've, I've got a, in my world, I've got a, a calendar system, right? It's yeah. 360 days, 12 months, uh, 30 days each. Just keep it simple. Months. Um, yeah. but I never thought of, of adding signs to it. Now I'm like, fuck, maybe I, I, I need to start looking into that. That's way of the you know. Zodiac monk subclass. Yeah. Dude, I highly I, recommend oh, Zodiac subclass would be crazy. That's a good idea Ooh, as well. Yeah. Anything about, and then there's the Chinese yeah. Zodiac. So like, if you wanted to double up, Ooh, oh. the Chinese Zodiac has five nations, elements, right? Oh man. Like another nation's version of that, right? Like in your world yeah. or whatever. Ooh. Or continent or something. <laughs> yeah, Maybe so it's like, like, like similar but different set of buffs that's like Ooh, on a like year it. basis, <laughs> not a month basis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dude, I love that. It's pretty good. Uh, 
it'd be interesting to see how like you, you could go like an entire Anybody campaign like not even use, uh, <laughs> the aspects that you get from that then like close to the end somehow that saves you yeah oh man so i love it when the sh- stuff like that happens You're like yes like imagine like that reduced hp damage keeps you one away from right just one away out. from yeah tpk or whatever <laughs> and <laughs> it would be that difference a lot of parties are straight up in the mindset of the only health point that matters is the last one it's true which i i don't i don't know if i necessarily believe in that mentality but um it's it's a big one out there uh, <laughs> it is yeah it like there's no point in healing do more damage and i'm like mm, i don't know <laughs> maybe you not i don't know if they're dead <laughs> well that's I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i personally like uh i've been playing a lot of Baldur's gate and it's been no secret on this show i love the idea of throwing a potion at somebody mm-hmm. as an attack action and having yeah. it break on them and heal them a little bit that's pretty dope and i i don't think this is like you know groundbreaking or anything most people do this but at least in my games Bonus action, you can use a bonus action and take a uh, a potion, but you got to roll yeah. for it. And if you use an action, you get the full amount, right? So it's kind of a strategic mm. thing where, mm. you know, it's like, oh, okay, cool. I can do a bonus action, roll for it. It might be good, it might be bad. And then if I want to take my full action, you get that full amount. So you get that superior, you know, but it comes ah. action, which can be good or bad, right? Mm-hmm. I-, I like that. At the very least, it's just like, okay, that adds weight to the decision of doing that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I've, I've started at least on roll 20 anyways. I've been, um, I've been hiding death saves. I do them myself. So that yeah. way players don't know, oh, you had two saves. I don't need to worry about you. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing where it's like death no longer yeah. means anything when people are gaming it that way. So when yeah. I'm the only one that knows death saves, all of a sudden everyone's healing everyone. Mm. You yeah. Know? And, and it makes it a little more terrifying, to be honest, which is good. I, I do like fight. the mystery of that because uh, it's one of those things where I don't, I like to feel like the the party actually cares enough about one each each other when exactly when they see someone go down there's like no this mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. exactly that's you know so and so my best friend my brother whatever it doesn't matter um yeah instead of just it oh we're cool you got three saves you're fine <laughs> and like if you have a brutal uh enemy that starts just going after people that are down like yep. wanting to secure their kills because oh yeah you know, yeah. if, if the enemy operates by zombie land rules, like don't be afraid to double tap. Mm, that That's some dangerous stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of my big bosses do that, right? Like they're smart. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Like I could see bandits not doing it. Like maybe they don't know any better, but mercenaries, mm-hmm. mercenaries give zero fucks. They oh, like yeah. to confirm they're, they're their kills. To get them kills. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. They're hired to do a job. They're going to make sure it's done. I think that if you're going to do that, though, it might be good to telegraph it to, you, the, to the players a little bit. Oh, 100%. That's a session zero shit right there. Like, you're going to be like, yo, this yeah. is, you know, this happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I think I would kind of like uh, set the scene a little bit. Like maybe uh, <laughs> they, they see uh, an ambush happen on up ahead of them. And then like this person like gets knocked out initially. And then now that they're on the ground, like blade straight yeah. through the skull to just kind of set the president the precedent that although that person was on the ground not a threat they did not care like yeah. you could even be like oh you come up upon these people and there's like a bunch of people all dead on the ground and then there's just one guy going around each skull pop yep pop no, pop I, I yeah exactly clean up clean uh, crew right um that's terrifying of, that's the mood yeah oh yeah for sure it's that's the great thing and <laughs> maybe it's maybe as a dm it's one of those things that you maybe use too much but i feel that um using npcs uh as mm-hmm. a telegraphing uh tool is is one of my favorites like using a beloved npc all of a sudden you know gets their brain taken out by a, a, a intellect devourer and like oh crap we need to take these things seriously buddy just got yeah. his brain taken over um yeah you know yeah for sure i love doing that 
I, I love when fights get that mood shift of like, oh god, okay, no fucking around. Like we yeah. really, gotta- <laughs> yeah. Especially when they go in a little cocky, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm full, and that. and we got potions, we're good to go. And halfway yeah, through, like, oh no, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always just love when like hello. Do their damage, they're like, okay, cool, we got good numbers. They get hit, yep. they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, you get that big hit, and they're like, oh, that breath attack was brutal, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I guess that kind of uh, leads me into uh, you're a professional DM, like, uh, what advice would you offer to someone that's like uh, trying to, you know, DM at that level? Oh man. Um, I think the biggest thing is, uh, especially with, 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 I guess, paid DMing is it's not necessarily your game anymore. Right. Mm. That's, that's the biggest mm. thing is, is that like you, you, yeah. Even if it's a homebrew, you know, yes, it's your game, but it's not your game. Right. right. So if, if the players want a particular style, right. Um, try to give that to them at the same time, you know, if you're not a DM that loves running dungeon I crawls, don't run dungeon running. crawls. Right. But you know, be prepared that if, if you're a little more on the role-playing side, but your players are more on the combat side, we'll switch it up a little bit. Um, you know, try to cater to them and remember that it's it's about them more than it is about you. Um, Definitely can't it, be afraid to be flexible, right? Yeah, be flexible. And ego, man, like I, I know it's hard, but like I think we, we all fall, fall you know, um, fall to it once in a while, but like <laughs> your ego needs to stay at the door um, and – you know, this it goes back to that. This isn't about, it's not your game. It's, it's, they're paying you to run a specific scenario, a specific thing, whatever they want something to come out of it. So, you know, you have to give that to them. Now it doesn't mean that just cause they're paying you that you're going to give them all this magical shit and not giving a challenge to them for sure. Right. But you know, you got to, you know, you don't want to sit there and TP gave them on the first night. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, that that's not, uh, it's not great. Um, <laughs> bad for business one might say for, exactly right um so i i think one of my my biggest things is just to kind of remember that um you know this isn't your home game right like you this isn't the place to experiment this isn't the place to try new scenarios um you know be sure that you you know what you're running right if, if it's your own stuff cool make sure you know it if um you're running you know fandelver that's great that's awesome. Just make sure you know it. Um, and the, you know, it, cause you're going to be running it over and over again, uh, right. you know, to be quite honest. So, um, you know, get good at it. Um, make sure you know um, yeah. what is coming up so that when the players do decide to go off the rails um, mm-hmm. and they will, you can, you can adapt um, very quickly without them knowing, hopefully um, at all behind the scenes, because you know, this outcome, you know, the scenario, whatever, You've run it a million times um, and you're able to improv. That's the biggest thing, right? Um, mm. Is know it enough to be able to improv. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely. I don't know. I guess those are kind of my, uh, my big <laughs> ones. Um, don't worry about knowing all the rules either, right? Like mm. there's a what lot of it? rules. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm very curious, like, what is it like DMing, especially for like strangers, you know, uh, for, you know, those kind of people, what is that like, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a little weird at first. Um, mm-hmm. and that's what session zero is great for, right? Um, session oh, zero absolutely. and discord, uh, we sit down and, and <laughs> we and always say, you know, do session zero. <laughs> session zero is so important. And, and if you need two or three of them, get two or three of them. That's yep. totally cool. Um, I, 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 session zeros are a great place to lay down the rules, lay down the expectations from everybody. Uh, mm. you know, try and, and be like, Hey, this is going to be a grim, dark campaign. Here are the mm-hmm. things, uh, you know, to expect. Uh, this is going to be a high magic. Uh, you know, here are the things to expect with that. Um, right. Here are my homebrew rules. You know, um, I, I, I do counterspell differently. Here are my rules for it. Um, and try to remember, right. you, you're probably going to forget something, right? Because there's so many things. But And, and right. the biggest thing is, you know, oh, if something okay. new comes up that you forgot to mention in session zero or whatever, be like, hey, guys, this is how I handle it. Stop the game for a second. This is how I handle it. Um, any questions, cool. And then we move on. If people don't like it, then that's fine. You know, we, we, whatever, but, um, that's kind of, um, how I like to handle that. So it's not a surprise to people. Right. So they're not like, no, actually that misses because of that one rule that I didn't tell you about and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and right. that's not fun. Right. That's, and it happens a lot more than it should. 
Um, yeah. It, I, uh, yeah. It's it, it, those are kind of my big ones, man. Remember that you're there to entertain people with a story and D and D happens to be the tool you're using to make that happen. Um, you don't have to be good at voices, but you've got to at least be able to run the game, good pacing, um, and right. read read the players, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely be able to like read the players, read the room, yeah, read the room, and it's having, absolutely necessary. Like that's really one of the reasons is. that the prerequisite I made for the campaign that we just started after so many campaigns that we've been in online, I'm like, no, non negotiable. I want cameras in this. Game. Yes. Yes, yes. Cameras make a massive difference online. Um, it, it, not always, but I would say 90% of the time. Uh, my best role-playing games are the ones that everyone's got cameras on. And, yeah. you know, we can all see what everyone's doing. We can all uh, participate in, the, in the, the, the highs and lows of what's happening. Because um, as much as I love playing online, nothing beats in person, right? Um, no, absolutely. And, Right. And Roll20 has made it infinitely easier, at least for the DMs um, you know, and other tools to run things online. Mm-hmm. But you still lose some of that magic. Um, yeah. Another thing to get back to the whole uh, new players thing. I have one-on-ones with all my players um, or two players if they know each other, um, according to the backstory. So after a session zero, after we've got the rules and we've kind of figured out, they have a, an idea of you know, who they want to be, uh, whether it be with homebrew or whatever, uh, and then I'll sit down with them. I'll give them a couple questions at the end of, of session zero, be like, think of these things and then we'll meet up again. And then I go through a whole thing with them. I'm like, all right, cool. So tell me about your, your character. Give me your backstory that you have. And then I'll start asking questions based on that. If you start telling me that you, you've got family you be like, all right, cool. Do you have a mom and dad? Do you have a sisters? Are they still alive? What happened to them? Um, you know, you, you, what city are you from? Uh, what nation are you from? Uh, how long have you stayed there? Um, is it, you know, did you stay there your whole life? Cool. Well then who do you think you would be best friends with? You know, um, would you be into blacksmithing or whatever? Would you like apprentice under somebody else or whatever the case may be really trying and ask these questions to these players. Um, and that makes them more comfortable with you. It makes them more comfortable with their players. So that when they do start role playing, mm-hmm. they, they get that, um, a little bit. And the first sessions are always weird and awkward to begin with. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but that having that um, kind of really deep one-on-one with, with these uh, people uh, really, really helps. Um, I find with role playing and just getting comfortable with everyone. Um, and it, it, you know, not everyone is, is good at that stuff and that's totally cool. And that's where you, you know, I've got a set of rules. I've got a set of questions and kind of things that I can really kind of, prod at and if they don't know that's totally cool we move on they think about it and if they don't have anything i'll make it up and then i'll let them know um you know and and that's okay too uh because you're not going to have some players that just don't get super into the backstory and that that's okay you know not everyone wants that um yeah i don't know if that answered your question kind of went on a rant there but (laughs) no that's that actually answers a lot of questions uh, before even needing to be asked really Great. Good. It's uh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's, it's um, D and D is, or DMing is, is uh, I, I think it's a skill that people are afraid of and, and I, I, I get it. Um, but it's not as crazy or complex as people make it out to be. Um, yeah. Honestly, it's, like it sounds right? like a lot, but once you get into it, it's really, really just like playing anything else. Yeah. And that's just like, I mean, obviously don't, I don't recommend you've never DM to go start paying, like <laughs> oh, to go well, pay games, yeah. obviously. Right. But you know, mm. I, I've been doing this for 20 years, right? Like I've been doing this for a long time um, and 10 pretty hardcore. Um, and, and you know, it, it's, I've only started feeling comfortable in the last couple of years. Where I'm like, you know what, maybe I can make a little bit of money doing this. Um, and you know, Trying to, um, it, it's that confidence, right? Of yeah. Just like confidence in your skills mm. of, um, you know, I could do this. It's, it's not as hard as people think. No, 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 right? Right. Yeah. Definitely yeah. practice your friends though. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that point, it almost seems like uh, your home games are, it's like a focus group. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and it's funny because I've, uh, in my world, I've been, um, it's, it's one of seven ages, right? And this, I've been working on this age, um, for about three years now, but I've got two groups mm. that have been playing in it for the last three years. Right. So they're always All testing right. and, and, and moving things along and, and a lot of times kind of directing how I'm planning my world. Right. Um, yeah. so that when I do, when I did start playing for, for money and things, everything was already done. Everything's planned out. All my maps are done. Everything is done. All the NPCs are done because my players played in it two years ago. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So it, 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 having those people to really trust and pull on, be like that worked, that didn't work. Um, you know, um, that, that's, that's a really good kind of thing to have um, that back and forth with your players. Cause you might think something worked and it didn't or vice versa. Yeah, right. like uh, you're getting all that good feedback to optimize your process. And it seems like uh, one of the things that makes being a paid DM work really well is it not just being you alone. You have the backing of your previous players it, that have played the games that you've run. So all exactly. that stuff, you not only do you know it, you have all the feedback to optimize it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And you've probably seen every scenario or a good chunk of scenarios that could ever happen in those, you know, areas, which makes you more prepared, which is really easy to, to, or easier to improv at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, that's, I don't know if this is good advice or not, but I've always been a firm believer in building your own world so that it's easier to remember. <laughs> um, and it's easier to like improv on. However, that's not necessarily always the case or true. Um, but, um, I don't know. I've never been a big module runner. Uh, I find that, yeah. um, I, nothing against them and they're, they're fantastic. I just, they're not my style. Right. Um, I'd rather just, yeah, come up with I hear that from a lot of DMS and like in my case, I've uh, taken to running a one piece campaign. So it's like, that is a IP that I have, that I know very well. I've been watching one piece since it was a Saturday morning for kids uh, thing uh, right. as a kid. So it's like, I know uh, one piece well enough to be able to run that. And like you said, know what you're running. And mm -hmm. as a DM, like I'm good at making stuff up at, on the fly. So as it stands, I put my players in a place that's not well documented as far as uh, canon goes. And then by the time they get into canon things, I can start tying stuff together. Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. That That's the biggest thing, man. I, I think that's the biggest secret, honestly, is, is just knowing enough to improv properly, which I, I know is kind of vague, but um, you know, if you know enough of your world or whatever you're running, you're going to be Oof. able to, to make up stuff that, you can tie in later. That makes sense. You don't have to go crazy to be like, how does yeah. this work? How can I, you know, um, web this, this, or weave this web of, of craziness. Right. I feel like one thing we take a, take a lot of pride in here is our, you know, wide array of valuable and non-valuable knowledge on <laughs> non-specific <laughs> topics. Yeah. Approximate <laughs> knowledge of many things. Yeah. Yes. Many things. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The jack of everything, master of none. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, if people and, and come here for like, anything, it's to learn stuff. <laughs> right? Um, and I, I don't know. I, I find that as much as I love critical role and all of these, mm. these, you know, dimension 20 and all these things, I absolutely love them. And I, and, and it's, it's improved my game. It's improved Ow. millions of people's games. Um, however, I also find that, that, that whole, like everyone feels that they have to be voice actors. It's like, you don't, you don't, yeah. you don't even need to put on voices, right? If you're good at it, great. Awesome. But you know, you can narrate what happens without a voice. Um, right. That's okay. And it's yeah. still going to be a good game. <laughs> Absolutely. People, like I find I that my all-time favorite uh D, D uh actual play stream, uh well, I didn't watch it as it was a stream, but it was all like a recorded podcast episodes. It would be uh tabletop escapades, which okay. it was very well formatted. Like all the people were just regular players, and it was my introduction to the genre, so maybe I'm a little biased there, but it was four players, just a regular DM. They're doing their things. They're having their normal conversations. And some, some did voices. Others didn't. It, it, was, a, it was a healthy mix. And mm. more importantly, unlike uh, these larger things like Dimension 20 and uh, 
critical role. Like, I feel like they get bogged down with just having too many voices in this. Uh, like, they, they got too much going on all at once. So it's like, okay, cool. You have seven or eight players. As a listener, that's a lot to keep track of, you know? Like, especially yeah. if you're just jumping right into it. As opposed yeah. to, like, oh, you got four people plus DM. Good to go. That, that's pretty simple, straightforward. Honestly, true. Well, that's another thing, actually, for the paid part is is I my rule is I don't go more than six players because even even though I can handle you know eights, um, it's not fair, right? Anything right. after six it turns take too long. You know, it's like a four hour session. You know, when it really breaks down, people only play like thirty minutes, right? When mm-hmm. you start getting eight players, when it's your friends, that's fine. But when they're paying for it, you know, you got to yeah. be constant. Everyone gets that a decent amount of spotlight, right? Right. Um, right. So anything more than six, I find is, is, I don't think it's fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's hard you know, manage. you see even, you know, big studios like Critical Role struggle with that many players. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, it's, yeah. It, 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 yeah, four to like five is ideal in my book. Right. Um, however, think, that six like player, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I think, I think currently like they're at like what, six or seven. That's kind of a lot. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> And well, they had that crazy like crossover too, where they had like 10, because oh they split the party, right? Like for a while, yeah. they, they had like that 10, there was like 10 or 11 people. It was crazy. That's <laughs> just so too weird. much. It's too uh, much, I, man. I, I, I couldn't even possibly, not, not, over, not online, in person, I could probably handle an in-person. The most I've ever handled on in-person was like eight people. <laughs> But that was for a one shot, and so half the players there were new to uh, tabletops altogether. And I don't know how they managed it, but they did PvP without ruining it. Whoa, <laughs> that's that's hard to do. Two of them being the uh, new uh, players, which is just like that's cool. It, it was incredible <laughs> to see, you know, because first mm. off, being able to not ruin everything with pvp that you're not used to with a group that you've never met this is your first time playing like usually that results in uh, your traditional D horror story yeah mm-hmm. yeah it does and it does it's i mean rare. we had the, the pvp segment in the one beast game yeah it went pretty yeah, well session one y'all go right into pvp and that's actually another example because uh josh that that is his first D session and he went right into really? pvp with you oh. Yeah, it was it was so cool. It was such a fuck around and find out. Like, but I, I respect the energy vibe. Like, love it. And that, gets, that and goes back to, to session zero, right? Like, that's something you touch on. Like, do we do PvP? Yes or no? Yeah. If, oh, if we didn't if discuss we do, it whatsoever, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like for paid games, you got to do that, right? You have to have that mm-hmm. that that conversation because if oh, you absolutely. don't, you know, then yeah, you're, you're like, gonna have people like trying to check each other. Like, yeah. Um, and that's not um, a fun experience. Well, maybe it is for some, but um, yeah, it creates I, I, a it creates an odd dynamic. I feel exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like PvP should be consensual. Mm-hmm. Like a, as a lot of people say, when you want to have a good experience at your table, it does require a collaboration. This is a collaborative storytelling game at its heart. So the heart of collaboration is consent to collaborate. Then if you got two it's people also, working against each other, that's not going to work. Yeah. It also becomes tricky when you like when you have a PvP uh, situation. It, it creates a fine line of like, okay, I'm probably stronger than you, and then it's like they're like, well, why are you stronger? Than me? You know, it creates a weird dynamic. Yeah, and yeah. it's like you're gonna have to understand that like there's a lot of things to consider. Where it's like in some cases in a straight up fight, yeah, maybe they are, but it doesn't make you necessarily like a weaker character, you know? Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, cool, your AC is twenty one, but let's see you dodge a fireball, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, There's aspects that every character should be able to like feel like they can shine in. I feel. Yeah. Yeah, ex- yeah. Exactly. That that's the biggest thing, right? Make sure everyone's got a shining moment, um, if possible. Right. Yeah. Um, that that kind of goes back to uh, the my classic uh, reference for that the uh, hero time like they used to do in Shrek 2 because uh, in the Shrek uh, 2 video mm-hmm. game they always made uh, sure to give each character something that only that character can do this mm-hmm. is their yeah. time to shine hero time 
Maybe Fiona's yeah. uh, charming some birds with her voice. Maybe Donkey is the only one that can go and donkey kick this thing. Maybe uh, the agility of Puss in Boots is enough to get through this thing. Now, right. each mm -hmm. character of this is very much like that of your classic five-man band, which really makes for a good party in classic D&D. &D. Right. Like, the five-man band is a trope for a reason, which is why the four to five players is the sweet spot of D&D. &D. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Um, especially with 5e and its weird CR system, um, which I feel really bad for, for new DMs have to deal with that garbage. Um, it's, mm. um, yeah, uh, that, 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 you know, the game was made for four players, so we got to keep that in mind. Right. So if we're going to eight, you know, you've got a lot of work in the DM, uh, in the yeah. back end to work on monsters, right? Yeah. Like your monsters, you're, you're, you're not going to be, you know what? My biggest thing with CR is, is if you want it to be a challenge, at least match their action economy. So if they could hit 10 times, your monster needs to hit 10 times, right? Yeah. yeah. Whether through legendary actions or whatever, um, you know, regional effects, whatever, but that's work, right? You got to sit there and figure that out. You got to, you know, go and cobalt, um, you know, fight club or whatever, or sit down and actually play it out and be like, all right, I've done that numerous times where I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do five sessions really quick or like five rounds yeah. of a combat. Maybe, you know, maybe my math is wrong. And a lot yeah. of times I do it. I'm like, oof, that was too powerful or not powerful enough. Um, yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it takes time. You have to keep that in mind that the game was made for four people and for six to eight encounters per day, which nobody ever plays. Let's be honest, unless you're running a huge dungeon. Yeah, yeah you know? it's really tricky to hit that. But one of the things I do is I like to count non-combat encounters in that. Oh, 100%. So, 100%. Because you absolutely have to. Because, like, okay, anything that can drain your party's resources, yep. mm -hmm. absolutely a thing. Uh, with our current game, they haven't had a long rest yet within the first few sessions. And I'd say you guys have had, what, four encounters, maybe five at most? That no, seems we, uh, we just finished pretty much like one long fight. Right. Yeah, that that's that combat encounter was one thing, and you're going into another uh, situation that branches off of that combat encounter, and then you had like a a couple uh, encounters in the marketplace dealing with situations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, like personable encounters. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, and then you uh, factor in uh, you guys uh, decided to fight each other, so y'all created your own encounter right there. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're using charm person, you're using, you know, command, all these little things that cost, it costs stuff. Right. So exactly. Even just, even just interacting with NPCs. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you guys solving the situation with, Oh, the half the marketplace is on fire. We got to go deal with it. That is an encounter. Oh, these yep. people are arguing. There needs to be a solution here that, you know, en encounter mm -hmm. right there. And as you guys were going through all of those things, expending resources and handling all of that, even though it's not combat, mm -hmm. I like to award XP for that. I like to imagine that each character, you know, has emotional resources, just like people do, right? They got the mental spoons to deal with yeah. the, the bullshit throughout That's the good. day. Like, <laughs> I like the term mental spoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you, it's easy to... to like think about those things when you give them like a physical idea, right? You have five spoons throughout the day. You do some stuff, you know, hmm. take one away. You're not feeling so hot. Maybe you just need some time by yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. That kind of deal. <laughs> so I like to imagine that characters have like something like that as well. You know, dealing with that social situation might've been very stressful. Then you're in a fight for a long time you know that weighs on you yeah not just physically but also emotionally you know that's just it and yeah i i do that sometimes within um it's more often with monks than other because they need yeah. a little bit of help um but i i've i do that with with monks where you know if they if they want to like meditate on their day of fighting mm. or whatever, right. I'll be like, all right, cool. Roll a wisdom save. And then based on, on how hard that was and what level they are, I've got a DC in my mind. And then if they meet or beat that, then they get an extra D four or maybe a D six, depending on the level of, of monk of uh, key points that day, right. Yeah. The next day, because they, they, they spent time kind of refreshing and, and having that mental uh, mm. going, you know, replaying that, that event in their mind. They're able to kind of like, how can I, 
learn from this, you know, and to me that they need the extra key points to begin with. So this is yeah. a fun way for them to, to kind of get that. Yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that idea of mentally unpacking to kind of uh, compartmentalize that into key points. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I like that too. I can even see that going deeper in, you know, translating into like sorcery points. Yeah. hundred like, percent. You know, I I do the level like with with paladins and clerics and especially those that that deal with with the gods and stuff, right? It's like if you're interacting Ah. with your god a lot, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with that. I'm gonna make sure that I lean into that, right? Because yeah, maybe get like a channel divinity back. Exactly, exactly, right? Especially if you're doing it like every day and someone's role playing every day and they're like. I wake up, I do my morning prayer. Like, all right, cool. What does that look like? You know, roll a quick religion check uh, at advantage or whatever. Um, and then based on that, you can kind of role play and be like, you know what? You, if it's really high and really good, have them actually talk to the God. Right. And then yeah, if not, then like have them see a symbol, right. Yeah. Of something like a dolphin jumping out of the water and it looked like the, the, the icon of whoever. And you're like, Oh, okay, cool. They were listening, you know, little yeah. things like that to kind of push the player into kind of role playing that aspect a little bit um to kind of explore it and you get to explore it too and make up some really cool shit for them yeah absolutely like one of the things that i've benefited from so far in the current campaign is it was a uh, homebrewed together by a group of people and they added this feature called pirate prestige for the one piece oh, D and with pirate prestige it functions similarly to classic inspiration but you can spend your pirate prestige on things like being able to uh, get help with getting to a quest objective, being able to better do a task that you specialize in, like say the lookout, cool. the navigator, the helmsman. These are all roles within the crew. Right. So you like can for, spend uh, it. Yeah, you can spend it for a special thing exclusive to that role. Right. Like, for example, my character, um, I am a merchant chef. So my pirate prestige is to create like a high class feast that gives, you know, temporary HP. For- right. That's funny because so like- in, in my camp, in, uh, Vermilion Isles is super heavy at Monotical, right? Um, and I've got kind of new jobs and, you know, we've got things from like captain, first mate, quartermaster, helms, ship's doctor, mm-hmm. ship's mage, exactly cook, like right? And they all do slightly different things, right? Like if I look at the first mate, for example, you know, prerequisites must have a 13 or above in charisma. Uh, you gain proficiency with investigation for rumors. Well, uh, the first that, yeah. mates and non-officers, you know, things like that. You have proficiency with skills. You, uh, If you already have proficiency in the skills, you know, are an expertise in it. Um, and you know, and they have non-combat and combat actions that they could do on the mm-hmm. ship. Yeah, right? exactly. Right? And that's, that's, that's fun. That adds mm-hmm. another level to, to, to the ship, right? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I did with this pirate prestige is I was already developing my own homebrew system that was more combat based to kind of incentivize players to have more teamwork. So it's like, okay. Well, if Pirate Prestige stacks, I can give these players another way to spend it by like, oh, you want to do a team attack. That's cool. So with the Pirate Prestige, basically at its base, each player will roll percentile and whatever a number they uh, get, the closer those numbers are, the bigger the bonuses they're going to get if their attacks hit for the team attack. So it's like if you get it within like uh, so many uh, numbers of each other, like uh, maybe within like 15 uh, of e- the initial rolls uh, that the players get. Okay. That's going to be a critical. Oh, that you're going to add this damage die to whatever maneuver uh, your harebrained scheme is turning into. Ooh. And if you uh, manage to get it exactly on the dot, boom, max damage, plus all these other benefits that you would have gotten uh, before. Cool. And then uh, so on and so forth. And the pirate prestige, you can roll a D20, then subtract what you roll in the difference between the numbers that they rolled initially. So mm-hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So say one player has a 20 and the other has a a 70. Okay, I want to spend pirate prestige to bring these numbers closer. Okay, mm-hmm. 16. That brings it a little bit closer. The other player has a pirate prestige. I want to spend that to bring it closer. Okay, that's 11. That comes a little bit closer. So now as they're spending prestige, they're getting more and more benefits. And the pirate prestige is awarded for role play. And what's more role play heavy than teamwork? 
Yeah, true. That's really true. good. Huh. That's, that's pretty cool. Have to, I'll have to make a proper PDF for it, but it's something that I was working on before and it wasn't very well developed, but it combines very well with the pirate prestige system that they already had in place within mm-hmm. the uh, player's handbook. You know, speaking of this subject, I think this is a great time looking at the time we have here to get into our generic realm. Ah, yes. Generic realm! Lots of fun! Excellent! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, welcome to the generic realms. I believe uh, last time, Sam, I explained why it's the generic realms, because, like, the homebrew <laughs> can go everywhere. Because yes. you just smash it all into whatever generic setting you got going. Truly belongs in anywhere and anything. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I do enjoy. And, and, yeah. I do enjoy that. See, I, I can words. <laughs> I can words. <laughs> you word it like that. Uh, word is fun. <laughs> right. So I like I like what your uh, your homebrew here is is vibing to me. So why don't you go ahead and get that one off your chest? All right, all right. Well, we did uh, mention this briefly before the show. I present to you from the unearthed arcana subreddit by user chunky lubber 54 he had a little bit of trouble uh, with this because he uprooted a bunch of his homebrews and then uh reddit's like no smack you, you keep you gotta we're gonna take this one down you 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 put too many homebrews on here today and then he had up uh he updated this one like 14 hours ago so i was fortunate enough. apparently like uh, he got flagged by the mods for uh for quote flooding uh, the, uh, the oh. unearthed arcana, <laughs> probably meant to put it all in one thing, and it was just like <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so good. <laughs> he had a bunch of content, and I highly recommend uh, y'all check him out. I left a link uh, in the description, of course. Now, bring to we bring to you the can't a special evocation cantrip, witch slap. Nice now. The casting time and action range of touch. So, and a somatic component duration instant. This is accessible by artificers, bards, sorcerers, and warlocks. Might even replace your Eldritch Blast. I recommend slapping some invocations on this one. (laughs) You reach out and backhand a target within your reach. Uh, Make a melee spell attack against the target, treating the attack as an unarmed strike for any trait or class feature that required an unarmed strike. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 force damage, and if they are large or smaller, they are pushed 10 feet directly away from you in a straight line. I love it. And it, the it upgrades as typical cantrips do uh, by one D8 at fifth level, another D8 at 11th, so, so on and so forth. So the, the, the idea that the caster can walk up to someone and magically say, bitch, please. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of this. It's pretty good, honestly. It's yeah. Yeah. It, it's not too crazy. Um, you know, it, it, so it, it's. Like- it feels pretty How? solid. Uh, maybe if I was being picky, I would maybe make it five mm-hmm. feet instead of ten. But that's that's if I'm being really really picky. Um, it's a pretty I, solid I cantrip. Love the idea <laughs> of like melee casters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you mind, me and my buddy were talking about a punch wizard where they just like punch people and cast stuff at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Right. This kind of but this fits that. that. Yeah, it does a hundred percent. And it Ooh, says cool. it counts as an unarmed strike. So for the purposes of monk abilities, the right? combo potential is That's like cool. people are always dunking on the monk for not being good enough. So about time we fix that with this cantrip. I, yep. I like it. <laughs> I'm a fan. I could even see, you know, an upgrade version of this being like maybe a first or second level spell flurry of you know i don't know flurry of something Ooh, you can hit multiple targets like three targets yeah. or something uh, yeah, everyone, i don't know yeah, about yeah, that where are, it, it is a cantrip but, yeah, but if, if you, you use if you used it in the same breath as like uh certain abilities that combine with unarmed strikes like stunning uh 
yeah, like a, yeah, what is it? That, yeah, stunning strike yeah, or whatever. Strike. You know how we talked about with your character Ezra in one of my other campaigns, how she had a spell that she liked, so she worked on it for a while and then turned it into something else, right? And then I feel yeah. like natural uh, evolution of their magic is like a part of being a caster, right? So yeah. they should be able to take something that they like and be like, oh, what if I, you know, tweak the form of the spell a little bit? I added something else. Yeah. Why, why couldn't they, you know, make different variants yeah. of the spell? Or different yeah, 100%. Like, I, that, that flavor is really good. Like, I feel like that can, and even if you do want to take it out of, a, out of the cantrip realm and throw it into leveled spells, then you can have some fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Exchanging the range, you know, upcasting, you get to add another person or another slap or whatever. Yes. Um, multiple hands, you know, all of a sudden you're like, uh, what's his face on that? Uh, <laughs> where you're um, just a battle fucking, mage. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Force hunters. Like, it's crazy. You could go out. I, I do like that. It just seems like it'd be a whole lot of fun. And the concept of, like, if your DM is chill with letting evocations be applied to more than just Eldritch Blast, like yeah. if somebody <laughs> wants to slap evocations on something like Vicious Mockery and you happen to multi-class to get it, I'm okay with that because the concept of spitting uh, words so hard and knocking people on their ass. It's I mean, really cool. It's supposed to be like a power in the words, right? That's yeah, kind of like yeah, really yeah. Own it, right? So why shouldn't you be able to influence the the <laughs> The will and the intent of the spoken power. You know? Right. Yeah. And the role but, playing with and that the spell, role play. it would be huge. Like, it's a lot of shenanigans, <laughs> but it would be huge, you know? Not to mention just the sheer fact of uh, that's such an anime thing to happen. Like, you shout an insult at someone so hard, not only do they take mental damage, but they're knocked back by the sheer back. force of your words. Your ears words burst. physically come oh, out and God. slap them in the face. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Mm, I oh. can see some more serious flavor here, but what you got for us this week, Sam? All right. Today I present in the r slash magic items on Reddit, the Whisper Reaver created by a user, the Kutal, um, with a collab between Nicholas Esser, created a 3D image of his weapon. It's pretty fucking dope. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's a mysterious entity bound axe. Okay, so, okay. The Whisper Reaver is a hand axe that allows communication with an unknown entity. It can create darkness you can see in and also frightens. And I pulled this little knowledge. image up on the, uh, on the stream just because it's just neat. Hell yeah, it is pretty neat. The weapon is also cursed, blurring reality and causing pain from illusions. So, item category, we have simple melee weapon, hand axe, plus two bonus, light throne, 50,000 gold piece value, you know, pretty normal stuff there. So, we got mm. creation axe can sometimes be found in places steeped in dark magic, such as forbidden vaults within ancient ruins, or lands cursed by forgotten tragedies. Forget forbidden magic users are drawn to the Whisper Reaver, seeking to commune with the mysterious entity, hoping to harness its power. Okay, so this could kind of tie into like maybe some kind of warlock. Yeah, oh, like I'm thinking a sentient yeah. weapon right off the bat. Like, oh yeah, that, you know that feels very. Um, so this is a very rare, requires attunement. Yeah, I can go ahead and get into the description and stuff here. We got this hand axe is made of wood and black stone. It has three inlaid bloodstone gems. A horrifying visage of a terrified man is etched into the weapon. You have a plus two bonus. <laughs> no problem, no problem. You have a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. Pretty standard. So getting into the entity here. While attuned to this axe and holding it, you can communicate with a specific nameless entity. Though whether it replies is completely up to it. Whether the axe houses this entity or is simply the connection between you and it is unknown. Whenever you activate a feature of the axe, the eyes flow with tears of blood. God dang. That's cool. <laughs> that's pretty dope. That, that's pretty dope. <laughs> we got Taste of the World. Taste of its world. Once per day, you may cast a darkness spell without expending a spell slot or material components. While you're holding the weapon, you can see in this darkness as if it were lightly obscured. The darkness created by this ability is also accompanied by terrifying illusions and sounds. Oh, I like 
Oh, that's cool. Creatures that begin their turn within the area of darkness must make a DC 16 wisdom saving throw or be frightened until the start of their next turn. Is there a spell that does this already? Um, possibly. Uh, really question cool. mark. Uh, if not, it's something very similar. Um, yeah, like a zone spell. Of like, it feels like a like I know like conquest paladins yeah. got like a fear aura. Like it's a very fear yeah. aura type of thing, right? Creating um, a zone of darkness that also has a fear. Oh, yeah, like it, it, it feels like a um, a paladin kind of aura almost. But um, I think I'm probably just mixing stuff up. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. no, that's no, really that, cool. that actually sounds very on brand. And mm. dude. It just makes me think of that song, Fear of the Dark, you know? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, next up, we have Dark Secrets. The entity bound to the axe can grant you forbidden knowledge at a cost. As a bonus action, you can ask an entity a question and receive an answer as if you had cast the Legend Lore spell. However, using this ability drains a portion of your life force, causing you to take 2d6 necrotic damage that cannot be reduced or prevented. You gain a level of exhaustion for an additional use within a day. You can ignore this cost if you offer a a sentient creature's life as you ask the question. You may use this creature a number of times a day equal to your wisdom modifier. Interesting. I like the... I like... Sacrifice for legend lore. It's interesting. I I like that there's exhaustion. I'm a big exhaustion fan. Yeah, Um, there's not nearly enough of it. And then, like, the wisdom modifier, like, it's not uncommon for your more martial uh, classes to just dump their wisdom. Yeah. 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 So this this is actually, I got to say, this is one of, like, the few, like, very rares that's actually reasonable. (laughs) This is really cool. I like, there's a lot of drawbacks to this. This is cool. I love drawbacks because, like, it adds more sustenance to Mm a item in general i, I yeah, love that kind of stuff it has like a personality to it you know has yeah. its own thanks yeah, so cool. next up we have the curse while attuned to the whisper reaver your mind struggles to differentiate reality from deception causing you to have disadvantage on all saving throws and ability checks to determine <laughs> illusions Ooh. additionally any interaction with an illusion that appears to have harmed you inflicts 1d10 psychic damage to you as the deceptive magic convinces your mind of the pain's reality you cannot take the second damage more than once each turn. All right. Okay. So this if you do, cool. have, so if you do have the wisdom to be able to wield this and get some good stuff out of it, you're still likely to fail some of your wisdom saves yeah. while wielding this. That's some, uh, some yeah. last favorite text here. It's interesting. The ritual altered, shrouding the young king in an awe-consuming darkness. Terrifying beings lurk within. Their ghastly whispers and shadowy forms encircling him. Out of the shadows, a sinister presence approached, its voice chilling yet alluring. Do you crave it still? Mm. I like it. There's a lot of fun potential you can have there. Um, It's not super OP. It's not, but there's a lot of of fun dramatics and a lot of good like role playing there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have a character right? that this kind of like fits with? That's weird. Easily enter a entire campaign arc around it. Hundred percent. I can definitely see that. Yeah. Like they 100%. want it. They don't want you to have it. Maybe it's like a plus two, right? So it's you something. know something you know tier three kind of. So all all benefits. Let's see here. So we got a plus two. You got this entity that can give you some some information. You got oh, maybe the, it lies. <laughs> The darkness spell. I mean, it doesn't say that it tells you the truth. It, it just has this information. I could, and, I could see maybe making a variant of this thoughts. that maybe appears now appears yeah. to be I mean, it's, it's more like a. Knowledge. So I mean, yeah, like m- maybe have it like a, a variation of this that seems more holy like maybe yeah. uh, maybe instead of darkness blinding light and like kind of like yeah, yeah. Some of it. Um, or even like a healing, healing aura or something right oh, like you could have like another one they kind of go together one's like dark Ooh. and curtain like, yes oh. <laughs> oh that's good oh man Mm. Interesting. Oh, you know, it'd be kind of, uh, this might be maybe not, but like, it'd be cool every time you use it or every day you got to roll to see which side you kind of like pull the power oh. from, like good or bad. Ah. I don't know. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. 
because they never they never you know discern like what this entity is so it's really mm-hmm. up to you and it gives so it much fun with that all of entities it could be one singular thing yeah two it, entities that hate each other it'd be every time you Ooh. sacrifice something to it it gets like added Oof. i could see that That'd be yeah there's a lot of flavor to be had with that and it's one of those things where a lot of items benefit from the tiny bit of tweaking and homebrew that you can just throw in. Like, like I said before, <laughs> this is a whole darkness vibe, but if you invert that a little bit, maybe the party's more apt to trust this. Yeah. Maybe it's more like a, a tricky Fay or, uh, or like some kind of celestial. That's just very, very sketch, like a sketch celestial. Mm-hmm. How often do you come across that? bound often, demon right? or something like it could be, it could be it. yeah yeah you could be even like a demon right like a, or or even just like a um a neutral like a chaotic neutral yeah, god like neutral, right that's yeah, just so yeah. like unpredictable and just loves chaos right yeah like a <laughs> crazy little humans Come on. right <laughs> dance <laughs> dance monkeys <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Uh, but th- yeah, that could be, man, there's a lot of fun with that um, on both sides of the coin, like you're saying, good and yeah, bad. I always think about like the Death Note situation. He's just like, hey, what if I just, what if I just give this to you? See what just give this to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. It's a really powerful oh, book. You're just going to oh, have it. I shouldn't have this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's like having Whatever a book of finger of death. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good item. I I I enjoy that. I, dude, I can even see there being like a little more to it. Like maybe this entity like has a chance to corrupt you or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> always- <laughs> I, I could see that be a slow progression. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe you wield it for a long time. Every every like week or so, there's a secret save. This could be that <laughs> that item that levels up with players too, right? It starts off oh, with like I love you items know, like. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it starts off really small. You, you know, I can cast darkness once a day. That's it, you know, or whatever. And then as you kind of level up and, and unlock shit with the story, it unlocks stuff, you know, within the weapon. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that, that could be a lot of fun. Or like a cleaver or something. Like, yeah. Like a great sword, maybe. <laughs> right? Like, who knows? Maybe it yeah. changes, right? Like, that. that's kind of okay. cool, too. I know we're like, completely destroyed this guy's homebrew. But, I'm sorry. Um, I love your homebrew. Thank you so much for your creation. It's cool. <laughs> like, yeah, this is a homebrew, right? To inspire yeah. just more. Right? Yeah. You know, shout out to a Reddit user, uh, the Colodal One. Cause, yeah, good uh, job. And shout like, out to the, you it, know, John, what was his name again? Sorry. The, the person that did the art. I wrote it down here. Yeah, the, is there more information on this guy? Because uh, oh, Nicholas Esser uh, was the person that did the art for for that weapon. Oh yes, really oh, cool. Really we do appreciate our artists here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, well, that's the artist. Yeah, I don't know if he has uh, time. The, the Colossal's Forge. So he's got like a whole thing going yeah. on. The, yeah, yeah. Patreon. Talk about nice, oh, nice, nice. Nice. Twitter chronicles and everything. It's all over the place. I'm pretty sure the Mythos Chronicles is part of his thing or their thing. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think that's pretty neat. And I love when an item just kind of like comes with a certain degree of inspiration. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. If, if you could start kind of riffing on an idea based on a homebrew, you got something good. Even if mechanically it's not there, who cares? The idea is 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 there, right? Mechanics can always yeah. be changed, and, and you know, yeah, that idea is, is is what's important. That's a really really cool idea. Um, nice small variation on shit we've seen before, and it's cool. I like it. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think we have time for a monster this week. We went kind of crazy <laughs> on conversation. We went kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not a that. bad thing though no 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 i like it this was a great one we had great great points that was that was a good time absolutely I really enjoyed it thank you so much yeah time flew by this time <laughs> i know right it's almost <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's great all right so where can people find you 
Um, I mean, not too many places just yet, but uh, you could find me on uh, Start Play uh, Facebook accounts, and I'll probably be starting a Patreon here in the next few months. That's the kind of plan, nice. anyways. Um, you know, so uh, keep keep an eye out for that. I'll try and keep Facebook and all the things. Um, up to, I'm old, so I'm on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, platform. those are kind of uh, my my places you can find me on Start Play uh, and Facebook are kind of my big ones for now. Awesome. Hopefully, a Patreon come, coming soon. Oh yeah! All right, looking forward to that. It's been great meeting you. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, you, thank you so much, guys. It's been uh, it's been yeah, amazing. It's been a lot of fun. Oh yeah, Ryan, you want to go ahead and uh, send this out? Well, you know, everyone, you can find us over at the the. Anywhere podcasts be casting, the YouTubes, the Rumble, the uh, all those fun places, and we do oh. have a Patreon. If even if it's just like one last kind of thing before small. we finish, yes, we yes. do have the new art done by Rebecca for our banner for the new Twitter. Ooh, Ooh I'll and, be putting uh, that up. Yeah, people can go ahead and check that out. We are on the Twitter. I'm sure after after this, it'll be posted. So, you know, give a word out, give you guys, give her a shout out. Thank you to Rebecca. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just wanted to get it for her. That's all good. (laughs) But hey, this has been Dungeons and Talk Shows. Y'all have a great weekend and we'll see y'all next week. See you. (laughs) Damn. I don't know if you have it. I'm going to send it to you again real quick.